we have on the door is an August Smart Lock. August Smart Lock is kind of like your virtual doorman. It uh, lets you do things you think you should be able to do with the lock, like lock and unlock it, but you can do it now with an application. Uh, as well as it lets me set rules for when I will allow access to different people, like the cleaning crew that only comes in between 2 and 3 o'clock on Fridays. So I can enable that. Uh, that's, their, that's their product, but we've also worked with them to add some service frameworks in, uh, into it as well. So we, they've added the all joint notification service framework. Notification service frameworks let you send out text messages to the home, and everything out in the home can display them to the consumer. Uh, they've also added the all joint event service framework as well, and that allows the device to send out events that happen to it. So events that are important for a door lock are things like the door lock, the door unlock. So they've done that. So for this first demo, there's a couple other devices we'll show you here in the home and how they interact. So one is the LG Smart TV, another one is the All Play speakers next to the Smart TV, and then the lighting. There's lighting up in the upper left-hand corner living room from LifeX. LifeX is a Wi-Fi enabled multicolor LED. We work with them as well to add all joint service frameworks to their uh, products for this demo. They're also here in the kitchen as well. So I'm going to use the application. So the LG Smart TV goes by kind of quickly, uh, but I'll go ahead and unlock the door, and it'll establish a secure relationship with the door. Welcome home, Paul. And unlock the door. So, so uh, it's an unnoticed text notification. Welcome to this home. It's displayed on the TV and on this uh, speakers as well. So speakers also have nuanced text to speech technology in there that enable them to translate that text, well, notification message into an audible file that we can also play in here. I'll send out the event that was that uh, the door is unlocked. We set the LifeX bulbs in the home to watch for door unlock, and he sees that to go to a higher lighting level, so welcome home to a nice living environment. Now what's cool about all this is not, well, the demo itself is cool, but that's not really what's cool about the demo. It's that all this was enabled by these manufacturers independently adding services to their devices and doing it in a way that made sense for their device. So August could decide what's important for a door lock and they do events, what's the important events. They don't have to start to think about what's alliance and all that, how to interact with that. They could do all this independently and then we can bring that together and the consumer will be able to bring that together and create experiences that are greater than the, than the sum of the parts. So let me ask you this, are you, how does it all interrelate? If I'm going to a store and I'm buying these different devices from different things, different places, how am I going to know that it's going to be seamlessly able to integrate so that this door is going to work with this TV that's going to work with this lighting if I bought them in all three different places? So one thing we've done with all join is we've released that out as open source and now we've also con uh, contributed that out to the all Seen Alliance. So we formed the all Seen Alliance. Uh, We've joined that as well, worked with the Linux Foundation for that. Many uh, consumer electronic companies have defined that as well. So one of the things that they're going to work on to find is what kind of marks go along with the devices so that you know, so the consumer understands what that experience would be. So that's one of the, the issues that that alliance will address, is how that messaging is uh, taken to the consumer and how that, um, what that brand and mark means on packaging. I actually meant it from a technological perspective, that we're uh -oh. going to have the, the surety that if I buy that light over there, that it's going to fit within this system. So it goes back to the very first part of that answer, which is that we've released this out as open source. So it's available to everyone. It's available on any kind of chipset, not just Qualcomm chips. Anybody can take that, put it on their devices, and it's going to work. That's all there is to that. And what kind of chips are you currently being used to run this? Which ones? Uh, so. There's actually many in here that are doing this. Um, uh, I don't know, I'm gonna try to build a name all of them. There's a TC4004, I think, in the higher uh, AC. Um, the alarm clocks are things, our prototypes we built, I think, with our uh, 1931 chips. But there's multiple chips with different classes of devices here that are driving this experience. And are they all connecting because there's a Wi-Fi in this home, or how are they all connecting? So actually, all join runs on top of the IP layer, so it doesn't have to be Wi-Fi. In fact, all join's not even really aware that it's running over uh, Wi-Fi. So it can be Ethernet, wired Ethernet. It can be uh, power line. It doesn't matter to all join. Just that it's an IP-based transport. So all, all join is going to be a service that Qualcomm offers. Explain that to me a little bit. So uh, all join is um, uh, it's a framework that we've released out as open source. Anybody can take it. It's free. Got it. So so let's say. And then, but we're going to pre-integrate it on our chips. Uh -huh. So that when you take our chips and we'll build a product with it, it's going to have all joint already on it, and we're going to test and make certain it's quality whenever it goes out on our chips. So let's say I'm a service provider and I want to create a unique kind of service for people in the home. I want to take your all joint, 
it's open source, so I can take it, create an offering that is my kind of offering, and then I'd be able to sell that offering. Is that how you anticipate entering the marketplace? So actually we see it entering marketplace on uh, appliances and devices as they go into the marketplace. So, so the manufacturers uh, are going to bring it into the marketplace. The manufacturers are key to get into the marketplace first because we want these devices that I can interact with. Once these devices start to come into the market, and that's established in the ecosystem, you start to have TVs, and the speakers are shipping out in quantity, uh, you have the door locks, all these things are out there. Now you're going to see service providers come in on top of that and add services that are going to leverage those devices and the, the services those devices expose out to the home. Right. Does anybody else have a question? Well, it's might be a simple one, but I mean, so it's going to be integrated on the chips that are in, the, say, the lights or the fridge or, or what have you. So it's going to be integrated on the connectivity chip. So that's, if it's a Bluetooth It'll be, it'll, it'll it be integrated be. on the, exactly, be integrated in the devices. So this is the device, all the devices interacting with each other here. There's no central controller coordinating any of this. It's the LifeX bulb interacting with the door lock directly. And all join, is it already ready in the marketplace? It's already out there. It's being used. So all join uh, is out there. So we, we started all join almost three years ago, I guess now, uh, with some application providers that um, uh, we're doing using that as well. This uh, LG Smart TV is uh, actually enabled with Altoid. Uh, they just, they just, announced just announced this. Oh, announced so, okay. okay. Great, great, great. And so um, it's yeah. starting to hit the marketplace. What are you yeah. anticipating? What is the next step for Qualcomm in this area? Oh, you know, I don't know that I'm going to try to touch that one for you. Um, I think I'm going to hold off on that one. Okay. Yeah. Um, so let me ask you. Go for it, Mike. Sorry. Well, I, again, I'm trying to understand the, uh, a little bit of the market. So, yeah. okay, say the light has a chip, uh, connectivity chip on it from Broadcom. Let's say it's a Wi-Fi connection. So, why would Altron work with that chip? Uh, uh, so, Broadcom would go to the Alliance and download the open source, port it to their chips, and give it to their customers. So, so you're saying so the manufacturer or, would be or, the one that would drive that, that would or, make them do that? Because why would they do that with the uh, Qualcomm technologies around it? So one of the things we think is really important for this to take off is for the ecosystem to be worth something, right? And that the right ecosystem to be worth something means everything you bring into your home has to work together. Mm -hmm. If Broadcom goes and does their own, right? Intel goes and does their own, you'll have three things, three groups of things in your home that don't work together now. Mm -hmm. So that's why we did this as open source. And just go get it and use it because we realize that what we're going to do is just create a bigger market. Qualcomm's gonna make money because there's a bigger market. It's more People buying chips with sockets in, so we win. Everybody, the whole market increases. We all win with that. Who else is part of the alliance? Yeah, so we yeah. just announced that in December, Jeff. But you know, like Ken said, I think in addition, I guess yeah. you know, the all seen I, Qualcomm's very interested in the all seen alliance or this vision coming to life through the all seen alliance. Yeah. We have twenty five. Also, Alliance has 25 members that um, have announced like LG, Panasonic, Sharp, HTC, Cisco, a whole handful that I probably can't you know list off the top of my head. And so they've all come together with this vision of things that are connected, being interoperable. And so we think the success of this vision really requires lots of more members to join the Alliance in ensuring the success and deployment. Right. That, that's what it's going to take, and Qualcomm's going to do whatever we can to grow that market and also to you know, hopefully create a sense of urgency mm -hmm. to create that demand. Because that, if that happens, then you know, Qualcomm's going to be chips for all sorts of things. Sure, like, sure. Of sure of everyone. Everyone. But I would think that, for example, other companies that have other chips are going to be entering this marketplace as well, to, Mark's, to Mike's point. Yeah, yeah, and exactly. so they are going to be competitors, or are they going to be joining the alliance with you as well? Well, you ask them, that would be a good idea. Well, I mean, I think <laughs> Intel talks about doing it as kind of a, even a gateway, kind of a little piece of hardware, right, that, that, that can talk to everybody on the internet. You, you know, you just can't see companies that are kind of rival competitors to, to Qualcomm as a larger business, you know, in the connectivity of this, joining and all joining us. I think it would be interesting for you to also talk to the alliance, too, because I think at that level there are alliance to alliance discussions happening, mm -hmm. because I think people do see at the highest level that, you know, fragmentation is not right. the right solution. Right, like somehow things need to be standardized right. at some level. Right, whether it's bridges across the ecosystems. Yeah. 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 